Hi. Welcome to Peaceful Slumbers. Please do not listen to this recording while operating heavy machinery or driving a vehicle. Find yourself a cosy space, close your eyes, settle down and listen. Hansel and Gretel Once upon a time there dwelt near a large wood a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children by a former marriage, a little boy called Hansel and a girl named Gretel. He had little enough to break or bite, and once when there was a great famine in the land he could hardly produce even his daily bread and as he lay thinking in his bed one night, he sighed, and said to his wife, What will become of us? How will we feed our children when we have no more than we can eat ourselves? Know then, my husband, answered she, we will lead them away quite early in the morning into the thickest part of the wood, and there make them a fire, and give them each a little piece of bread. Then we will go to our work and leave them alone, so they will not find their way home again, and we shall be freed from them. No, wife, replied he, that I can never do. How can you bring your heart to leave my children all alone in the wood, for the wild beasts will soon come and tear them to pieces? Oh, you simpleton, said she then we must all four die of hunger. You had better plane the coffins for us. But she left him no peace till he consented, saying, Ah, but I shall miss my poor children. The two children, however, had not gone to sleep, felt very hungry, and so they overheard what the stepmother said to their father. Gretel wept bitterly and said to Hansel, what will become of us? Be quiet, Gretel, said he. Do not cry. I will help you. And as soon as their parents had gone to sleep, he got up, put on his coat, and unbarring the back door, went out. The moon shone brightly, and the white pebbles which lay before the door seemed like silver pieces. They glittered so brightly. Hansel stooped down and put as many into his pocket as it would hold, and then going back he said to Gretel, Be of good cheer, dear sister, and sleep in peace. God will not forsake us. And so saying, he went to bed again. The next morning, before the sun arose, the wife went and woke the two children. Get up, you lazy things, we are going to the forest to chop wood. Then she gave them each a piece of bread, saying, There is something for your dinner. Do not eat it before the time, for you will get nothing else. Gretel took the bread in her apron, for Hansel's pocket full of pebbles, and so they all set out upon their way. When they had gone a little distance, Hansel stood still and peeped back at the house, and this he repeated several times till his father said, Hansel! What are you looking at, and why do you lag behind? Take care, and remember your legs. Ah, father, said Hansel, I am looking at my white cat, sitting upon the roof of the house, and trying to say goodbye. You simpleton, said the wife, that is not a cat, it is only the sun shining on the white chimney. But in reality Hansel was not looking at a cat, but every time he stopped, he dropped a pebble out of his pocket upon the path. And when they came to the middle of the forest, the father told the children to collect wood, and he would make them a fire so they should not be cold. So Hansel and Gretel gathered together a little amount of twigs. Then they set fire to them, and the flame burned high. The wife said, Now, children, lie down near the fire and rest yourselves while we go into the forest and chop more wood. When we are ready, we will come and call you. 
Hansel and Gretel sat down by the fire, and when it was noon, each ate the piece of bread, and because they could hear the blows of an axe, they thought their father was near. But it was not an axe, but a branch which he had bound onto an old tree, so as to be blown to and fro by the wind. They waited so long that at last their eyes closed from weariness, and they fell fast asleep. When they awoke, it was quite dark, and Gretel began to cry. How shall we get out of the wood? But Hansel tried to comfort her by saying, Wait a little while until the moon rises, and then we will quickly find the way. The moon shone forth, and Hansel, taking his sister's hand, followed the pebbles which glittered like new coined silver pieces, and showed them the way. All night long they walked on, and as day broke they came to their father's house. They knocked at the door, and when the wife opened it and saw Hansel and Gretel, she exclaimed, You wicked children! Why did you sleep so long in the wood? We thought you were never coming home again. But their father was extremely glad, for it had grieved his heart to leave them all alone. Not long afterwards there was again great scarcity in every corner of the land, and one night the children overheard their mother saying to their father, Everything is once more consumed. We have only half a loaf left, and then the song is ended. The children must be sent away. We will take them deeper into the woods, so they may not find their way out again. It is the only means of escape for us. But her husband felt heavy at heart and thought, it were better to share the last crust with the children. His wife, however, would listen to nothing that he said, and scolded and reproached him without end. He who says A must say B too, and he who consents the first time must also the second. The children, however, had heard the conversation as they lay awake, and as soon as their parents went to sleep, Hansel got up, intending to pick up some pebbles as before. But the wife had locked the door, so he could not get out. Nevertheless, he comforted Gretel, saying, Do not weep. Sleep in the quiet, and good God will not forsake us. Early in the morning, the stepmother came and pulled them out of bed and gave them each a slice of bread which was still smaller than the former piece. On the way, Hansel broke his in his pocket, and stopping every now and then, dropped a crumb upon the path. Hansel, why do you stop and look about, said the father. Keep in the path. I'm looking at my little dove, answered Hansel, nodding a goodbye to me. Simpleton, said the wife, that is no dove but only the sun shining on the chimney. But Hansel still kept dropping crumbs as he went along. The mother led the children deep into the wood, where they had never been before, and there, making a gigantic fire, she said to them, Sit down here and rest, and when you feel tired, you can sleep for a little while. We are going into the forest to hew wood, and in the evening, when we are ready, we will come and fetch you again. When noon came, Gretel shared her bread with Hansel, who had strewn his on the path. They then went to sleep, but the evening arrived and no one came to visit the poor children, and in the dark night they awoke, and Hansel comforted his sister by saying, Only wait, Gretel, till the moon comes out, then we shall see the crumbs of bread which I have dropped and they shall show us the way home. The moon shone, and they got up, but they could not see any crumbs, for the thousands of birds which had been flying about in the woods and fields had picked them all up. Hansel kept saying to Gretel, We will soon find the way, but they did not, and they walked the whole night long and the next day, but still they did not come out of the wood and they got very hungry, for they had nothing to eat but the berries which they found upon the bushes. Soon they were so tired that they could not drag themselves along, 
and they lay down under a tree again and went to sleep. It was now the third morning since they had left their father's house, and still they walked on, but they only got deeper and deeper into the wood, and Hansel felt that if help did not come very soon, they must die of hunger. As soon as it was noon, they saw a beautiful snow-white bird sitting upon a bough, singing so sweetly that they stood still and listened to it. It soon ceased, and spreading its wings flew off, and they followed it until it arrived at a cottage, upon the roof of which it perched, and when they went close up to it, they saw that the cottage was made of bread and cake, and the window panes were made of candy sugar. We will go in here, said Hansel, and have a glorious feast. I will eat a piece of the roof, and you can eat the window. Will they not be sweet? So Hansel reached up and broke off a piece of the roof in order to see how it tasted, while Gretel stepped up to the window and began to bite it. Then a sweet voice called out in the room, Tip-tap, tip-tap, who knocks on my door? And the children answered, The wind, the wind, the child of heaven. And they went on eating without interruption. Hansel thought the roof tasted very nice, and so he tore off a great piece, while Gretel broke a large round pane out of the window and sat down quite contentedly. Just then the door opened, and a very old woman, walking upon crutches, came out. Hansel and Gretel were so much frightened that they let fall what they had in their hands. But the old woman, nodding her head, was saying, Ah, you dear children, what has brought you here? Come in and stop with me, and no harm shall become you. And so saying, she took them both by the hand and led them into her cottage. A good meal of milk and pancakes with sugar, apples and nuts was spread on the table and in the back room there were two nice little beds covered with white, where Hansel and Gretel laid themselves down, and were happy as could be. The old woman behaved very kindly to them, but in reality she was a wicked old witch, who waylaid children, and built the bread house in order to entice them in. But as soon as they were in her power she killed them, cooked them, and ate them, and made a great festival of the day. Witches have red eyes, and cannot see very far, but they have a fine sense of smell, like wild beasts, so they know when children approach them. When Hansel and Gretel came near the witch's house, she laughed wickedly, saying, Here come two that shall not escape me. And early in the morning, before they awoke, she went up to them, and saw how lovingly they lay sleeping, with their chubby red cheeks and she mumbled to herself, That will be a good bite. Then she took up Hansel with her rough hand, and shut him up in a little cage with a lattice door. And although he screamed loudly, it was no use. Gretel came next, and shaking her till she awoke, she said, Get up, you lazy brat, and fetch some water to cook something good for your brother, who must remain in that stall and get fat. When he is fat enough, I shall eat him. Gretel began to cry, but it was all useless, for the old witch made her do as she wanted. So a nice meal was cooked for Hansel, but Gretel got nothing else but a crab's claw. Every morning the old witch came to the cage and said, Hansel, stretch out your finger, that I may feel whether you are getting fat. But Hansel used to stretch out a bone, and the old woman having very bad sight, thought it was his finger, and wondered very much why he did not get fat. When four weeks had passed, and Hansel still kept quite lean, she lost all her patience, and would not wait longer. Gretel, she cried in passion, get some water quickly, be Hansel fat or lean, this morning I will kill and cook him. Oh, how the poor little sister grieved as she was forced to fetch the water, and fast the tears ran down her cheeks. Dear good God, help us now, she prayed. 
Had we only been eaten by the wild beasts in the wood, then we would have died together. But the old witch called out, Leave off that noise, it will not help you a bit. So early in the morning, Gretel was compelled to go out and fill up the kettle and make a fire. First we will bake, however, said the old woman. I have already heated up the oven and kneaded the dough. And so saying, she pushed poor Gretel up to the oven, out of which the flames were burning fiercely. Creep in, said the old woman, and see if it is hot enough, then we will put in the bread. But she intended, when Gretel got in, to shut the oven and let her bake, so that she might eat her as well as Hansel. Gretel perceived her wicked thoughts, and said, I do not know how to do it, how shall I get in? You stupid goose, said the woman. The opening is big enough, see I could get in myself. And she got up and put her head into the oven. Then Gretel gave her a push so that she fell right in and shutting the iron door, bolted it. Oh, how horribly the witch howled. But Gretel ran away and left her to burn to ashes. Now she ran to Hansel and opening the door called out, Hansel, we are saved, the old witch is dead. So he sprang out like a bird from his cage when the door was opened, and they were so glad that they fell upon each other's neck and kissed each other over and over again. And now, as there was nothing to fear, they went back to the witch's house, where every corner were caskets full of pearls and precious stones. These are better than pebbles, said Hansel putting as many into his pocket as it would hold, while Gretel thought, I will take some home too, and filled her apron full. We must be off now, said Hansel, and get out of this enchanted forest. But when they walked for two hours, they came to a large piece of water. We cannot get over, said Hansel. I can see no bridge at all. There is no boat either said Gretel. But there swims a white duck. I will ask her to help us over. And then she sang, Little duck, good little duck, Hansel and Gretel, together we stand. There is neither stile nor bridge. Take us on your back to land. So the duck came to them, and Hansel sat himself on and bade his sister to sit beside him. No, replied Gretel, that will be too much for the duck. She shall take us once at a time. This the good little bird did, and when both were happily arrived on the other side, and had gone a little way, they came to a well-known wood, which they knew better every step they went, and at last they perceived their father's house. Then they began to run, and rushing into the house, they fell upon their father's neck. He had not had one happy hour since he had left the children in the forest, and his wife was dead. Gretel shook her apron and the pearls and precious stones fell out upon the floor, and Hansel threw down one handful after another out of his pocket. Then all their sorrows were ended, and they lived together in great happiness. Peaceful Slumbers Sleep sweet. <laughs>